continue with our patrons by looking here next at the guild patron from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And if we look at here, we have what looks like a, almost a wagon out of control right here, a carriage out of control. We got two people like a human and a bullywug fighting. And beneath it says, a hero fights the bullywug who guards the villainous master of the Baker's Guild. So I guess even the Baker's Guild could have somebody evil in charge. I remember once in a campaign even seeing a Beggar's Guild. So guilds are pretty much imminent endless so looking at guilds your group has ties to a powerful consortium of professionals who work together for mutual benefit you might be longtime members of such a guild descended from a family of crafters or merchants from which you inherited membership or perhaps you're working to earn interest on your own merits if you serve the guild's interest well it promises to take care of you guilds hate to waste valuable assets after all that's just bad business. And people, of course, are assets. Types of guilds. The guild structure covers a swath of business ventures differentiated by their specialty. A conglomerate of blacksmiths, jewelers, carpenters, tailors, alchemists, scribes, sages, anything you could think of, all can organize into a guild. Whatever their trade, these experts share contacts, exchange resources such as materials or tools, and leverage their collective influence to affect politics for their benefit. Alternatively, merchants and other business owners might organize into guilds, merchant barons who effectively rule a city or nation through ironclad control of the economy, or a network of innkeepers who shares news and supply routes could both represent guild patrons. A guild could even embody a more sinister group, such as one that deals in terrifying wares like deadly monsters. Maybe there's a, some type of crazy collector in the area. Maybe somebody wants it for an assassination. Could be dangerous knowledge or even souls. Maybe have an undead like a lich or a vampire in charge of that one. So here you can roll or pick from the guild type table. And here they have number one, a crafter's guild. This conglomerate of artisans pools its resources and influence to ensure a steady exchange of gold for its crafts. Two, merchant consortium. <clears throat> These entrepreneurs don't create the wares they peddle, instead specializing in linking products to prospective owners. If they don't have it, they'll find it. Number three, Miracle Makers Association. The magically inclined crafters of this guild specialize in imbuing physical goods with magical effects. Rumor has it they can strip the magic from existing enchanted items and might be willing to buy or trade adventurer spoils. Fourth here, money changers. These merchants deal in all forms of currency, acting as bankers, loan agents, maybe be a collection agent for these guys right here, and crucial contacts for adventurers and other individuals who deal with large sums of wealth. <clears throat> they exchange coin for gemstones as readily as they find buyers for historical relics and recovered art. Fifth, philosophical faction. These like-minded individuals follow specific teachings, spreading word of their expertise through their services and training. And then lastly, identity traders. These enigmatic tra dealers buy and sell documents, memories, and the trappings of thoroughly lived lives selling them to those in need of the ultimate fresh start. What a weird combination that is right there. So they definitely come up with some strange ideas for these. Looking at guild perks. With the guild as your group's patron, you gain the following perks. These perks require an annual contribution of 15 gold paid to the guild, replacing the five gold piece per month cost for characters with the guild artisan background. These dues fund the guild services and activities. So one little perk you could get here is accommodations. You can stay at the organization's guild hall. The rooms are comparable to those in a comfortable inn at a modest price, five silver a day. You could get equipment. You can requisition the use of specialized tools, laboratories, libraries, and other crafting space and equipment to use within the guild hall. When you make an ability check with a set of artisans tools using the guild's equipment, add double your normal proficiency bonus to the check. So that's good right there. Resources. <clears throat> you can leverage the guild's extensive contacts to locate exotic materials for crafting, spell components, or magic items, or buyers for them. You can locate or sell legal commodities using the guild's resources, and any prices tip in your favor by 10%. And then lastly, training. 
The guild retains knowledge, knowledgeable tutors and subjects pertinent to its interest. When you undertake the training downtime activity, the training takes half as long if you're studying a subject of, that the guild specializes in. The DM decides if the guild has tutors available for a given subject. Then you got your guild contacts. Even as a member, in good standing of the guild, you can't simply stroll up to the guild master and demand their attention. Your superiors within the guild manage work contracts, request the use of guild resources, and facilitate getting your group in contact with the right people to assist their interest. Roll or pick from the guild contact table. So as always, they've got your options right here. They love the D6s for these. Or of course, you can pick whichever one it is that you like for yourself. So number one up here, the perfectionist could be your contact. Your contact is a skilled but obsessive creator consumed with the quest to create something perfect that will define their life's work and secure their legacy. They lose sight of right and wrong in pursuit of the finest materials and exciting opportunities. Second, a tenant overseer. A guild representative takes personal interest in your group's task. They follow your exploits and know of your adventures before you return to report. Despite the unsettling depth of their knowledge, they seem genuinely eager to shepherd your work. Third, hidden benefactor. Whoever your contact is, they don't communicate directly. They send messages via couriers or letters. No one in the guild knows who the contact is, or if they do, they aren't telling. Regardless, the contact's information is good and they pay on time. That's what matters. Number four, discerning mentor. No matter how well you perform or how perfect your creations, nothing is ever good enough for this contact. They point out every flaw and missed opportunity. Are they bitter, lashing out at, at anyone around them, or do they recognize your potential and try to push you to greatness? And then fifth here, a good uh, novel idea, a golem guide. Your guild contact is the soul of a long-dead artisan preserved in a construct body. This golem is wise and knowledgeable, but it has difficulty grasping the passage of time and the state of the world compared to its original era. And then six here, fallen muse. Your contact is a fallen celestial. Whether they regret their transgressions or hunger for vengeance, they provide divine inspiration and guidance to you and to the guild. Somehow your group and the guild inspire their hope for ascension. And then we have the guild representatives. <clears throat> How would you represent the guild as a member? As a guild member, you might be a professional who works directly toward the guild's specialty or whose fortunes align with the guild's interest. Alternatively, you could provide the guild with services to which their members are suited. For example, guards, explorers, negotiators, and spies can be useful to a guild, whether it's interest line trade goods, entertainment, or more questionable ventures. Whether a guild operates entirely within the law and how public its interests are influences which of your skills it deems most valuable. The guild representative roles table is listed here. So there's the different options. Researcher, and there's the backgrounds they recommend, as usual. Negotiator, saboteur, guard, explorer, or expert. And then the good guild quest they always have at the end. As a member of the guild, you're called on to ply your skills in the organization service. You are required to undertake various tasks, either for the guild's benefit or on behalf of an influential client. Competition is fierce in the business world, and the challenges presented by rivals or circumstances can pressure you into dealings you find distasteful. So the first guild quest is deliver goods. Sounds sensible? You need to deliver an order to an important customer or partner of the guild. The delivery must arrive at a critical deadline, regardless of who or what tries to stop you. There's a campaign idea there. Number two, acquire materials. Your guild requires materials that are rare and difficult to procure, either for a guild project or for a paying client. Your group must gather the missing components from a dangerous location, maybe some hostile monsters in the area, or an owner while outpacing a rival to the prize. Third, eliminate a rival. A competitor has humiliated the guild one too many times, and it's time for that to stop. Your group is charged with assuring the rival never darkens the guild's reputation again. Can you trick them into permanent disgrace, or must you resort to more direct methods? I'm going to go with the more direct. And fourth, the masterpiece. An exquisite work of art for an influential client, either created by your guild 
or acquired through agents has gone missing. Something very valuable has been stolen. You must track down its whereabouts and secure it before time runs out and the guild suffers a penalty. And then the last two from that table right there, we have number five, the collector. Your guild is tasked to create or acquire something wondrous <clears throat> for a wealthy but secretive client's collection. Guild members who previously failed to fulfill this assignment ended up missing. The collector promises to return your comrades if you provide what the collector seeks, but if you fail, you'll become part of the collection. And then six, the bill comes due. Your guild master achieved their vaunted position by means of an otherworldly bargain. Sounds like something like a devil. That price has come due and they are desperate to avoid pain. You must defeat whatever's coming to collect the master's debt or find another acceptable payment. So here you're trying to get the boss out of hot water right there. So those are all good ideas. Hope you like the guild idea. It's got some great possibilities. Till next time, good luck and good gaming.